priority number one. Uh, the driving priority is it has to be fast, maneuverable, and small. For fast, it has to be fast so it can avoid uh, the defense, and so it can uh, cycle fast and uh, put gears in fast. Uh, maneuverable, uh, what we mean by maneuverable is being able to move sideways, quick turning, and easily moves uh, backwards and forwards. And for small, we just want it to be like simple and to fit the volume. And accessible um, as well, so we can make it easy to repair to get back on the field. Yeah, like uh, we thought, we definitely looked at fast and maneuverable, because last year our robot wasn't the fastest robot on the field. And so we thought that this year, since we have such a long distance to cover, speed is definitely going to be very important in the drive train to be able to cycle fast, because all the good teams, do, we, they, we, both, we do things well as well as the good teams. But what they do is they do them much faster. So that has to be a priority. To be up there, we have to do it well, and we have to do it fast. So we decided on uh, so we decided on H cap, uh, H drive. So as we want to move sideways. Yeah. So we thought that sideways is going to be really important to be able to line up with the uh, feeder station for the gears, and also to line up with the peg for the gears. And yeah, so pretty much more maneuverability is better. So we spend less time lining up. We can easily line up with an H rather than having to turn and recreate. So our second priority was gear placement. So we would we decided that it must be really easy to acquire gears from the feeder station. That would be our priority. We can pretty much ignore gears on the field that are on the ground because we like we calculated. You can drop up to nine gears in a single match until you have to start picking them up, up, up off the ground. And the chance that a, a single alliance drops nine gears on the field, we thought would be very low. And so we want it to be transport, uh, it to easily transport and position the robot. It should be simple, not take up too much space. And um, our design would be slanted to bring in the gear and then straighten out to hold it back up. And so we would place it on the peg using the uh, retro reflective strips and vision tracking like we did last year for shooting. And um, so our design, which I will show later, would it would position, it would fall down into the slot, and it would the, there'd be like a plinko board. There would be a little peg that would knock on one of the uh, teeth on the gear and position it in the correct orientation to easily slide the peg. In. And that would also assure that the gear is reliably placed on the peg without having to reposition it. Another priority we have is climbing. So what, one of the uh, things we saw and liked was a uh, uh, flat woven cord with Velcro. So basically, we would, if we could, we would use a set of rope. Uh, uh, a, a, as our rope, we would use Velcro, which uh, goes, which would, we would use a simple uh, spindle device to go up with. Um, and if Velcro is not allowed, the Y channel capture for the thick knot to pull ourselves up yeah. with the same spindle device. Yeah, however, the as we noticed from we got both of these in, inspirations from Robot Three Days, the Velcro design is actually really good. We can easily incorporate it onto our intake, so we wouldn't actually have to get another drum to or another motor on our robot to get even more space. But however, uh, if first does rule out having vel a Velcro strip as your rope, then we would we had an idea that there would be a rope with a knot at the end, and this would essentially slide in and just like get stuck on it without being able to pull, uh, pull up and then it would the this shape right here would start spinning and widening up the rope and pulling this up. However that's not as reliable as Velcro because when you try and run up to it sometimes it pushes the rope away and gets it swinging gets it really hard to get realigned. <coughs> So our fourth priority was shooting. So we had some debate if it was worth it. Originally, we were, we had a plan to be a, just a really fast robot, only gets gears, cycles back and forth really quickly, and climbs at the end. Then we realized that if we do want to be up there with the best teams, that shooting is what will separate all the good teams from the OK teams. And we decided that shooting is definitely a priority, because high goals um, in auto especially are very valuable, because one high goal shot is one point. And so we noticed that if everyone is focusing on gears on our alliance that we predict will probably happen, it's going to end up being a weak alliance. We're not going to be able to get anything done with shooting. And uh, since gears essentially cap your points at 100 to 160, uh, we wouldn't be able to score as much to win matches. And so we can do uh, both gears and shooting and autonomous. 
and that would give us a lot of points. 60 for the rotor spinning, and 10 or even more for the um, shots, so 70 total in auto. And we may be able to shoot while traveling to retrieve gears, so we would grab a gear from the feeder station, we'd come back and we'd passively pick up balls on the way back, so passively, not like it just rolls into the robot, but we're not actually aiming to go around and pick up balls. As we've gotten back, pick up balls, drop the gear off, shoot, and then return and keep cycling back and forth. And so the volume of the hopper to shoot would be determined by the real estate, and of course, like everyone, we'd have a wheelchair. So this is our uh, the idea that I drew up on uh, Charles's laptop. Uh, so, so this is our um, this is, uh, black is the chassis, and red sig uh, signifies the bumpers. Right here is our gear manipulator, which rotates back and forth from an angled orientation to a uh, straight up orientation. I will I can show I can draw up a picture right now. Where's the marker? Use the pen. So our right, idea. Charles is like, uh, Use the pen. It's easier. Yeah. It is getting easier. <laughs> Maybe not. So this is our design. So there's an L drive. There's an L O R if you want to project it. Oh, is it? Yeah. But you're better off doing it. Yeah, because it's bigger. It's easier. And so this is a this is a really bad drawing, but so this would be our gear essentially, right here. This little uh, triangle would keep it up at the proper height on the uh, manipulator, so the peg can still be at level with the peg. And this little, uh, little uh, peg right here would align it using one of the teeth, so the slot right, that's right underneath the top gear would be able to easily slide into the peg on the lift. And then right here we have two pneumatic pistons that would allow it to move back and forth uh, from the straight up orientation to the slant orientation. And as well as that, so we would have a servo gear with a bar that comes across, and the same thing on this side. And these bars would go up when the when the robot gets the gear in place, and that would allow us to just uh, open the flaps and just pull straight out instead of waiting for the human player to pull it up. So that shaves some seconds off. And we also realize that if that doesn't work, if the servo breaks uh, in the middle of the match, we should have a backup option. So we would have a little cutout, like right here, that allows the peg to come up and pull the gear up. So this this would be a cutout on the front. And then so that's our gear manipulator. Right here we have our intake, which would be on the ground. And so since this is a cross section, you can't really see. But the main chassis would have bumpers. But there would be a split at the front that allows the intake to come out. And this intake would pretty much pull balls up into the hopper. And right here we have a, a wheel shooter in the back, not turreting. But uh, we we're thinking about having an, uh, a hood that can adjust our distance. And the little, a little wheel here would pull balls in from the hopper. And this flywheel would shoot the high uh, Not just say high robot or low robot. Oh yes, we would be the uh, the low robot because high robot. We decided that he doesn't have enough floor space, and we're not really using the the height of the robot here. Uh, oh yeah, and also I forgot to mention. Yeah, so the shooter would be Wait, actually, please. the shooter would be really wide, would allowing us to shoot two balls at once for maximum efficiency. Since we can hold a lot of balls, we have to get rid of them fast, and we can't just sit there shooting one ball at a time. Two balls would get uh, get uh, rid of them really fast, and we can keep cycling even faster. What about six shooters? <laughs> 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 that would be cool. Okay, hold on. Uh, I should keep going. I'm not joking. You asked him, but not in his face. Okay, uh, how, how, oh, so how are we shooting two? There would be, this would be the top view of the shooter. There would be wheels right here, and there would be a little divider. That ball, uh, so balls would come here and here, and there would be a divider separating them, and they would, it would be essentially be the same thing mirrored on both sides, with just a divider in the middle. How do you put two balls into the into the hole at the same time? There's two different holes. No, into the hole that goes. There's two different ways. No, there's just one chimney thing. 
Oh, they just they both them. shoot and they both come in. The balls are small enough that the two of them can go at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boiler is actually yeah, the boiler is pretty big. Compared to the balls, the balls are only five. Boiler is about this big. Yeah. Uh, there's nine balls. inches of extra balls. You can probably fit three or maybe yeah. four. Yeah. Four yeah. Four They're going to be right next to each other. It's essentially going to be more like a shooter, just the divider in the middle. Can they turn out two balls to one or two times in a year? Uh, that was actually one of our concerns. The two balls may interfere each other, but if we can get the shots going straight enough, there, uh, there's actually a, the balls don't actually turn that much in the air over that short of a distance. We could, they wouldn't really interfere. With it. And then the likelihood of shooting them both exactly at the same time is pretty low too. Oh, yeah. 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 So, All right. I think call the interstation. You see, we're going to H drive. Yes. Why H drive? Because, uh, because in H drive, you get pusher on the field really easily. Yeah, so that was one of our considerations, but we thought the maneuverability of the H drive and the speed of being able to get around the defense. Yes. Um, not saying it's bad, I'm just saying from a driver's standpoint, yeah. one, there's a big thing in the middle of the field. You can't see what's going on, which is where you'd be maneuvering. Trying to do that also with these robots, if they even touch the bumpers, it's going to slow you down, and with the H drive, touching the bumper at any corner is just going to turn your entire robot. Just something to keep in mind when you're deciding yeah, to so, Yeah, so we did have the discussion between the H and tank, and we actually did think that an H is really easily converted into a tank, just remove the H and replace the Omni wheels with uh, regular whatever wheels that aren't Omni that we would decide to use, and it can easily be converted into tank if we realize that it's not going to work out. Thank you. I was just curious. Um, when, uh, what, you said you want the new maneuverability was valuable to you, right? So I'm just wondering in what particular game strategy you thought the maneuverability would help you out over time. Over tank drive, we thought, so the maneuverability was mostly moving sideways and easy alignment with the pegs and the meter. So that's why we choose this. Uh, yeah. So I might have missed it, but did you guys have, is your intake going outside the frame or is it staying inside? No, it's going to be staying inside the frame. Okay. So we did essentially you were going to stop the climber like above it or something? Uh, no, we pretty much just, uh, it would come a little bit, so not like outside the volume, the, the it wouldn't come outside of the buffers, but we would, um, it would stay inside, we'd essentially just drive onto the Velcro, and it would stick and stick. So it's part of your intake? Yes, okay. it's essentially the intake that sticks. So how are you going to handle this piece? What do you mean by this piece? So through your intake, you're, you're cycling a lot of balls through there. I think this is a general comment for everybody who's a shooter. It's like, uh, you're shooting a lot of balls that are deformable, and you're shooting them at a pushing through a narrow aperture at a high rate. It's likely that some of these at some point are going to jam. What are you going to do? Uh, like, uh, so we, I forgot to mention, we did have an agitator in the middle of that spin. Backs can vouch for me. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, for the shoot, jamming on the shooter, uh, we didn't actually think about that. Like jamming on a shooter, we can actually think about jams on a shooter. Yeah, absolutely. We can actually think about jams on a shooter. Jordan? Um, so, uh, you're going to have to get the shooter to the as Coach had said, uh, the likelihood of two balls being uh, struck at the same time is unlikely. But um, have you considered uh, the problem of uh, spin up time, cost potentially? Because if your uh, if your wheels are if your wheels can't get uh, up to speed, uh, I I didn't check, catch it, here, but uh, I assume you're running them in tandem. I said the wheels are just two shooter wheels that are running the same motor? Yes. Yeah. So um, if if both balls are being shot at the same time, um, then there's the potential of it being slowed down too much. Um, and also, if uh, if you're shooting balls at faster speeds, uh, then the, uh, then just a single ball, a single wheel taking a single ball, um, do you, will there be a problem of it slowing down, uh, it slowing down too much? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the, since the, our shooter is going to be going so fast, it can essentially make up the speed in the time that, so like with the speed, the wheel is going to lose energy to the ball as it shoots it. I think it can, it's going to make up the speed and return to its shooting speed by the time the next ball turns it. Um, have you considered the, but uh, there's two, the two shooters are being run in, uh, in at, 
as the, as the same motor. Yes. So if a ball is in, has been taken in and a half a and and like a millisecond later a second ball is going into the second shooter, um, they will and then you will have then they won't be able to recover. So. Possibly. Yeah. Well, the, since the balls are so much like last year, the balls were pretty much almost the same size as the goal. But since this year, the balls are so much smaller than the goal, I think we have a little bit of leeway on our shots, so we can shoot a little under and just get it in or shoot like that's, a little that's, over. That's not the right answer. So it's, it's, a, it's a viable question, uh, and there are things you can do to increase the potential energy in the system right. so that uh, each individual shot takes less energy. And another option you have is. Change, add another motor, or, yeah. or decouple yeah. them. The, the, so the, the, answer, the answer is have a lot of mass and a lot of inertia. Yeah, like what yes. I saw with people in 2012 is they were adding ginormous, just like just steel, 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 steel. We, we, we had, shaft. we had, right? we're, not, we're not designing that. We're not designing. We're listening. Let's move on. We're listening. Thank you. Um, any more questions? One more. What is that? What is that? Yeah. Oh, this is a, it's another wheel that brings the uh, the balls and the hopper into uh, the traffic. Thank you. That was great. Nice job. Team number, what do we have? One, two, three. Uh, Whoever had the ball. Is it team eight around? Yes. Let's do it. While they're setting up, I do want to point out that it's, good. it's really exciting and everybody's got things to say and um, you know everybody's really engaged. But if we have six or seven side conversations going on in the room and the air conditioning going on, then it's very, very difficult for your teammates to concentrate. So please, try not to have side conversations. Try not to fidget with the chairs or with other things that make noise because everybody wants to play. After this, don't go to sleep. Just start around. <laughs> All night. Um, two, four, five, three, two, four. What am I missing? One, two, 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 two,
So like on the drawings there, it's <coughs> on the front it shows a what it look like closed and open and back to and then side you can do this this angle so that you're gonna slide it. How big are your loops going to be on the rope? Loops. Um, <laughs> Less than an inch. Uh, right. <laughs> Ideally, they would be as small as possible. Well, that, my question is another way of saying, are you aware that they can't be more than an inch, <laughs> according to the rules?